Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of I Hate It Here, the show where we spend roughly an hour hating the world so you don't have to. I'm your host, Richard Lewis. Joining me, as always, is my producer, Sam, who's definitely got a case of the giggles tonight. And uh, we, yeah, we've, we've tried doing that intro about five times. <laughs> ridiculous already. Complete clusterfuck. I'm pretty tired. Just got done filming E-League. Uh, we did a, a pre-taped special that's literally going to be going out in a few hours of recording this. So I'm pretty beat, but the show must go on. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now, you know, <laughs> the first story, it's good to see, you know, when you have these horrible stories of children living in depravity and, and, and degradation and things get better for them. You know, you see this clear improvement. So this was on uh, fox5newyork.com, a report that a boy aged five who had brought heroin to school last month has now upgraded to crack. So he's, he, he, took a step, he took a step in the right direction. A young Trenton, New Jersey boy who had previously taken heroin to school in his lunchbox was found to have crack inside his personal belongings earlier this week, according to a report. And when we say... He was found with heroin in his lunchbox. You're like, well, Richard, I mean, you know, maybe, just maybe, there was just some heroin lying around in the kitchen. <laughs> Who's you left know? this around? Yeah, you know, and, and his mother was you know, busy making him a PBJ sandwich. Like, oh, bloody hell. Oh, where's my heroin gone? Oh, my me. Well, no, this was 30 packets of heroin in his what? lunchbox. 30 packets, mate. 30 packets of heroin uh a, a teacher thought the five-year-old was playing with a candy wrapper when she looked in his lunchbox and found 29 other packets of heroin uh and then the boy's obviously subsequently been taken away and placed in foster care right and uh because they were like well the 30 her- the 30 packets of heroin honest mistake you know, we get a lot of wrong coming in and out of the house. Could have been anyone's that. But then the kid goes to school. This time it's crack in a folder. <laughs> folder crack. Heroin, get. He- heroin goes in the lunchbox. Crack cocaine goes inside the folder. So needless to say, that's a kid in foster care. There's a terrible foster care system, but I kind of feel he's going to be better off at, at five, I think. I think, yeah, probably shouldn't be around 30 packets of heroin in your school dinners. (laughs) Probably, probably a bit much. Now, Sam, you're you're like me. You're very liberal and and progressive and open-minded, right? Yeah. And you know, obviously, we're coming up to Halloween, so we've got to be super careful and super thoughtful about, you know, diversity and and not being racist, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I've given lots of thought to it, and I, I think I think I'm, I've I've avoided almost every pitfall. But there was one thing that I, I wasn't really ready for, um, and uh, that is that there's there's just one racist element that I didn't have covered. And do you know what it is? Um, the witch costume. No, no. <laughs> Oh. It's not specifically to do with Halloween. I, I've just tried to tie it, tie two non-matching things together in a in a shit segue. <laughs> Basically, according to was reported in Heat Street, was picked up by Fox News. Canoes, canoes are racist. <laughs> canoes, that's canoes, the hollowed out bits of wood that go on the water canoes uh, and this is according to Misao Dean professor of English at the University of Victoria apparently the canoe is a symbol of colonialism imperialism and genocide due to history and people who use canoes are guilty of cultural appropriation because they're primarily white men and have a privileged place in society this was in uh does that even mean that i i, I most don't know what people who so... use canoes is that what that means yeah 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 most people who use canoes are primarily white men apparently i mean i, I haven't looked at the numbers <laughs> not me i don't think it exists does it well you know maybe, maybe. I, I don't know where she's pulled those numbers from 
Yeah, maybe there was a survey of canoers, you know. But apparently also if you are canoeing, you have a privileged place in society. Uh, you know, are, did you ever do your Duke of Edinburgh award, mate? Yeah. Did you go canoeing? Yeah, kayaking. Privileged as fuck, but Good. living in living in poverty in Port Talbot, <laughs> living on YouTube money, <laughs> right? And you're privileged. Privileged. Mate. Yeah, privileged I am white, though, so I guess I just have yeah. So this was in a radio interview uh, for CBC Radio, which like didn't get picked up for a few months. Sometimes these. Uh, you know, this absolute abject stupidity just disappears into the ether and people don't pick up on it. But we have, she, she, she says, we have a whole set of narratives that make the canoe into a kind of morally untouchable symbol. Something that seems natural, that seems ordinary, and seems to promote values that we ascribe to. But I think if you look a little further, that narrative obscures or erases another narrative. And that narrative is about, to be blunt, it's about theft and genocide. No, it's not. It's a canoe with <laughs> It is a fucking canoe, isn't it, mate? It's a canoe. Canoe has killed anyone. Didn't even steal yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, Dean continued to explain why she thinks Canada picked the canoe as a symbol, claiming it has to do with benefits to particular groups, particularly white men, who pushed the canoe. So there you go. Canoes are racist. Uh, you know, I, I can only say that if you were thinking about going canoeing, don't. This is about, cult, you know, taking away someone's culture. This is, uh, you know, about, about the murder of the canoe people. I, I don't know. Who invented them? The Canoes. The Canoes. Your Canoes myth. Whatever. Uh, so yeah. Me on someone I just made up. <laughs> Brilliant. Just just making up words. He made up words. <laughs> Hopefully you will follow in this guy's footsteps, Sam, so you don't have kids. Right. Uh, this is a report from the Toronto Sun. Man cuts off penis to avoid marriage. That'll do it. <laughs> it won't though. I know. <laughs> That's the worst part. Doesn't even work. It definitely won't. A despondent Asian man cut off his penis rather than be forced to marry a woman he didn't like. Sources say. Uh, his 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 friends told police that they feared he tried to top himself, but then investigators soon discovered that there was this big dispute bubbling up under the surface, that the man was being forced into marrying a woman he disliked. So he mutilated his own genitals so the marriage wouldn't go ahead. Interestingly enough, the man was reportedly already married with two daughters, but his family insisted he had to marry this other woman. When so... Move, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like if you just move away from your parents, your life would be sick. Yeah, I mean, why why not just... I, I mean, there's just a million ways to get out of this before you have to chop off your, your dick. Like, Change your number, get a train. <laughs> get hours. a train. I like that. Get a train. <laughs> get a train where you're going. I, 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 yeah, I'm going to anywhere except knob chopping off Seville. You know what I mean? Like, it's unreal, <laughs> isn't it, mate? Unbelievable. Um, uh, you know, and there's some lurid details in this report. You've got to wonder about the fucking media sometimes. I mean, obviously you have to, but this is ridiculous. So it's talking about the whole story and then just one random sentence completely separate from everything else. On the way to the hospital, his brother carried the severed penis in a plastic bag. Didn't need to know. Didn't need to know. It's like, it's like in a news report. When it gets to the end and they, you know, you've had all that horrible news, you know, AIDS, famine, no, 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 all the, all the horror of real life. And then it is a little fluffy puppy, right? Like, oh, today a dog learned how to play the piano. And everyone goes, oh, brilliant. I love that, right? <laughs> I love dogs that play the piano. Now, now the, the, the war and the AIDS and the famine, that's fine. Like, it, it's, it doesn't matter because that dog can fucking play a bit of Chopin. Now, that in this story is the dog that can play the piano. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry. The brother did get the penis in a plastic bag, and his brother begged the unidentified man to let doctors repair I his know, the penis. The fact he has to beg him. No, nope, yeah. I'm going no bless for no, the rest listen, of my life. No, listen, listen. I'm not marrying her. Look, just mate, can we just stick your dick back? No, 
<laughs> no, no, you bet. I'm not mad. Unbelievable story. Uh, not surprisingly, it does end with the man will receive psychiatric counselling. I think that probably should happen a little bit sooner. Now, we're talking about clickbait there and talking about, you know, people's um, genitals and lurid details about dicks in bags. Now, imagine if you lived in Derbyshire, mate. Because it's a hotbed of activity. No shit my life would be in. Yeah, exactly. But this is. I, I thought Wales was fucking bad, right? I thought Wales was boring. You know, nothing ever happens in Wales. Fight outside of Franco's, you know. Going to be fighting Station Road this weekend. We, uh, Halloween's very well known for scraps, mate. It is, it is, mate. It is. There's no. I'm, I, that's the one thing that I'm glad I'm not having to experience. <laughs> Another Port Talbot Halloween. <laughs> do, do you know, obviously a tangent coming. Fuck it, it's a show for tangent. Do you know how many grown men used to knock on my fucking door trick-or-treating? <laughs> <Like, laughs> no way, but. I've oh, had no, one, no. but I've had one, no, and I gave him I gave him sweets anyway because I wasn't <laughs> sure if he was sound in the head. Do you know what I mean? What? Yeah, so, what sweets because for? right, this is my thing, and I thought if he is a crackhead, can't get any crack with a sweet, can he? So I haven't supplied him with crack. If he's no not sound in the brain, bit of sweets makes him happy, loves it. So I just took the fifty yeah. fifty gamble. <laughs> hey, I swear to God, like I've had I've had like fucking, you know what I mean, like. Motherfucker must have been thirty or something, not gonna my door. No, no, he doesn't even do that though. He did the fucking classic one, right? This guy, like, he just looked miserable as fuck, right? For starters, like, obviously, it, it, you know, he, uh, on the one hand, he's being a bit of a cheeky cunt and having a lend, but on the other hand, he <laughs> yeah, probably is his mad poor, like, yeah. like and and Ooh, there is there choice. is something inherently fucking shameful in knocking on a total stranger's door and trying to pass <laughs> yourself off as a child just to get a quid, right? <laughs> and he did a he did a song, mate. He did a fucking <sighs> song, and he looked so like just shoot me, actually. I don't want a pound. Just fucking shoot me in the head, like. <laughs> <laughs> he did the song with. Oh no, we're gonna wait. Listen, just I gotta keep it together. This guy, I was so downbeat when he said. <laughs> right, hang on. Right. <laughs> oh, right, here we go. <clears throat> the sky is blue, the grass is green. Have you got a penny for Halloween? If you haven't got a penny, a Bob will do, and then something else, like, I can't remember. But it was so if fucking... you don't give me money, I'm going to stab you. Could have been that, right? Could have been that. I was too busy, like, just looking at him, trying to figure out if it was serious or not. Trying but to figure out right, what's wrong with him. Right, yeah, the thing is, though, right, if you're going to do a bit of trick-or-treat fraud, little tip for you all, if you're going to do trick-or-treat fraud, at least have a shave. <laughs> <laughs> he used to have a fucking shave, mate. This this motherfucker, like, he looked like Team America, like, when he'd been Valmorphanized. Like, he's had <laughs> random mad patches of fucking facial hair sprouting out all over. Like. <laughs> uh, this guy is, but you're having a laugh, aren't you? I just said to him, like, are you a little old for this? Nah. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm, I'm in school, me, but there's no fucking way <laughs> show me your kids, ID Be before I give you this fun size Snickers show me your <laughs> fucking ID mate that's pot hole in a fucking nutshell like anyway whew, nearly lost it there it's too it's too <laughs> shit in it pot hole it's too shit mate it, 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 it's I love it unfeasibly I like shit. living in I like living in squalor me <laughs> it's my favourite right so Derbyshire Times with a gripping report. I, I honestly think this has got to be a troll, right? But the headline is, Another broom snapped in half in Derbyshire Village. And this is by Michael Broomhead. So I'm guessing it uh, is okay, a troll. Right, there it is. A broom has been snapped in half in Derbyshire Village. The third such reported incident in 15 months. Adam Ward was on his way to work in Barbara this morning when he saw the broken broom. It's brush spiked into the grass like some kind of show of victory. And there's a fort with this. And uh, apparently this has been an ongoing thing in Derbyshire where people keep snapping brooms. So the newspapers had a bit of fun with it and is reporting on it. Now, meanwhile, of course, <laughs> real crimes, <laughs> real stories. Pip's not interested in that. Here's a broom snapped in half. Should be, should be doing stuff on Port Talbot, mate. A desperate man selling Sa tuna. Salmon, mate. Yeah. Salmon, sorry. Salmon thief. Here you go. Speaking of that, though, this this will blow your fucking mind. 
right? This will blow your mind. Semi-naked man found dead on Spanish airport bit bench with deli meat on his buttocks and genitals in tuna can. What the fuck? What the fuck indeed. So, police in Spain are investigating British the bizarre... Well. Oh, obvious. Brits abroad, mate. <laughs> police in Spain are investigating the bizarre death of a British man who was found semi-naked, bound to a bench outside of an airport with sandwich meat placed on his body and his genitals in an open tuna can. According to the BBC, the 51-year-old man was found Friday bound to a bench outside of Malaga Airport. Malaga, the British broadcaster, yeah, the Sesh Kremlin's back, man. The British broadcaster reported the man's body was found with his hands tied behind his back. He had been stripped of his clothing from the waist down. The Metro UK reported the victim was found with deli meat placed on each of his buttocks and his genitals placed in an open can of tuna. According to the Daily Mail. Uh, the victim was found face down with his legs bound to a bench between the airport's train station and terminal building. So think about how many people have gone past that. <laughs> Citing a source close to the investigation, the mail also reported that uh, the man may have choked on his own vomit. I always love that. To choked his on his own vomit. As well. Choked on his own vomit. Who else is vomit? Choked on choke vomit, him? mate. Right. There were no obvious signs of violence on his body, but the position he was found in suggested foul play. The Daily Mail quoted the sources saying, it is not known if what happened was done after or before death. The newspaper also reported investigators trying to determine if food was placed on the man's body by a passerby as some sort of sick joke. (laughs) Some sort of sick joke? Who does that though? Right, seriously, that can't be a line of inquiry. How How did this man's Nads getting this tuna can. Someone's done that for a He's laugh. Been putting the deli meat on his ass. Like, who would do that? Who would find a dead body and then think, "Hey, lads, <laughs> have a look at this, mate. Right? I'm gonna put fucking salami let's on his ass. Last, let's get one last stank <laughs> on his low down before he passes." <laughs> <voice. laughs> like it's so stupid, though. It's so fucking stupid that that is an actual fucking line of inquiry. But basically, look, I, I'm I'm no fucking Hercule Poirot, all right. But I'm gonna solve this case. So here's what happened, right? He's out with the lads, right? Sesh gremlins. He's out with the sesh gremlins. He's having a sesh. He's been tied to a bench. Like, lads, fucking hell, lads. Hey, banter, 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 banter. Love the sesh. Full gross score. Right? They've gone full gross score. They've gone full Brexit. <laughs> And he, he's fucking tied to a bench, right? And they've, they've done it as well. They've like, hey, you better be careful. You better not wiggle around too much. Here you go. You dicks in a tuna can. You might end up like that cunt who, who tried to get out of that wedding, right? And they put some salami on his ass. Like, ah, so the bird's bad. gonna to <laughs> get you or whatever. I don't know. The birds eat salami. I don't know. Probably. And, and, and while he's like, fucking hell, he's been trying and trying and trying. He's got knackered because he's really drunk and arsehole. He's gone to have a sleep. He's tied to a bench. He can't fall into the recovery position. He's had a spew. He's dead. Peace. There you go. Case closed, mate. Case closed. I guarantee you that's what's happened. A- another example of banter gone horribly wrong. Does happen. Speaking of that, right? this is a report from the BBC, 25th of October. This is fucking mad. This is just beyond mad. And this this is one of those stories. Uh, it can only it, it can only, There's some places in the world where stories like this can happen, and there's some places where they can't. In <laughs> India, no, listen, India is a wild place, dude. India is a wild, crazy place for real. Um, so, a disability activist who uses a wheelchair was assaulted in India for not standing up to the national anthem when it was being played in a cinema. So he's watching a film. <laughs> Uh, he's put the chair to one side. He's got comfy in the big seats. He sat down there, popcorn, drink, you know, the big drink, right? The unfeasibly big drink. He probably's having a pick and mix as well. May as well treat yourself. Right, is he hot dog kind of get. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> no, he's definitely. Hot dog kid, no, anyway. no, bro. <laughs> yeah, <oops>. Def- <laughs> yeah, definitely not. He's, have, he's, <laughs> he's having a chill. And the national anthem comes on. It's like, fucking hell, yeah, we still got to stand up for this out here. 
how can I forget, despite the fact I've lived here all my life. So, bada bing, bada boom, he can't stand up. He gets wrecked. <laughs> he gets absolutely pounded by a bunch of random do-gooders. Unbelievable nice. shit. So there's a whole article about it there, and it goes into it being the BBC and explores disabled rights and stuff in India and how difficult it is to go to the cinema and stuff, but just a fucking crazy story. Speaking of which, uh, this, nothing like a bit of cannibalism, right? You think you've had some bad dates, mate? Right, this one, on Breitbart. Uh, it's good to see uh, Milo's editorial input still going well. So this is just insane, an insane story. A man was allegedly strangled, dismembered, then eaten with chopsticks by a man he met on Grinder. It was a British police officer uh, who picked up uh, a guy on 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 the gay dating app. For those that don't know what Grinder is, if you watch my videos, you should know what Grinder is. Uh, but uh, it's a gay dating app. You know, you've got Tinder. Uh, you know, they've got Grinder. We've got Grinder. We've all got Grinder. Um, and yeah, basically, it, it's loads better. By the way, Grinder, it's 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 great. And he's tried to meet a random fucking stranger, and the stranger's a complete nutter, an absolute nutter, like not even the kind. Of fucking just low grade nutcase you might come across. Check out this fucking story. So uh, the killer is uh, the alleged killer. Uh, we're still using alleged for some reason. It's not like he's denying it. Stefano Brizzi is accused of trying to cook PC Gordon Semple's body parts after his DNA was found inside of a pot and on some chopsticks at Brizzy's residence. The remains of Semple's body were found dissolving in a bath of acid. After neighbours oh. reported the smell of death. Investigate those neighbours, by yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah, <isn't it? laughs> Tell what it smells like. Then when we uh, burnt our body about six weeks ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sting, yeah? Fuck, yeah. You, nothing stinks worse than a body. You'll never forget it. Once you've killed a few... Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> right? So it reported the smell also, of death. I like how you can uh, like guess how old people are based on the way they get rid of a body. So, like, if they're over 40 or 50, they're, like, the good fellas kind of guys. They're, like, you know, splitting up the body and then burying it. But this new generation is, like, a Breaking Bad generation where they saw the acid thing. It's cool. Interesting. interesting. It's pretty interesting. It's cool. It is. You can age psychos. Cool. What cool. they do. Really cool. Really cool. <laughs> yeah. It's not sound, yeah. but it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's definitely not sound. But, but it is cool, apparently. <laughs> so, Britsy asked police officers for a shower after he was caught, stating his bath had been unusable for days. <laughs> Not incriminating. Not yeah. incriminating. It goes on anyway. Uh, Grinder, the most popular mobile app for homosexual dating, has been linked to crimes in the past. Fucking obviously, you know, that, that's going to happen. Um, then. <laughs> Right, this is what Britsy said to police officers. I thought I was getting away with it. All I have left is two buckets of PC samples flesh. Britsy allegedly told police officers. I mean, he's gone, hasn't he? And then when asked why he did it, he said, I just didn't like him. Uh, Gets better. <laughs> they, they wanted to pinpoint the exact motive for the murder, so he blamed Satan. It's always Satan, isn't it? I know. It's always, it's always get out of jail, card. Well, always, you don't get out of jail, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely don't get out of jail. He's, he, this is insanity police shit, yeah. right? Because Britsy blamed the murder on Satan, claiming I spoke to Satan and he was telling me to kill, 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 and I agreed. <laughs> there you go. At the first opportunity, <laughs> kill, yep, kill, kill. Didn't have to say yeah. twice, mate. Grind straight away. We on about. So yeah, just be careful, careful <laughs> out there on on your grinder dates, boys and girls. Be careful public areas always right now this is all this is like one of those areas where it's going to be a like a hot topic of discussion right the headline yeah. teacher says she's the victim this is in the star.com after sleeping with student for nearly a year so she's a 24 year old substitute teacher he's a 17 year old high school student they have an affair that lasts months. She, by her own admission, says that they had sex hundreds of times. She's now turned around in court when it's all become public. 
that she is not only innocent of committing a crime, she's actually a victim and was manipulated by her pupil. What'd you make of that? Uh, <laughs> the, one, the only ones who left me speechless. Just yeah, so no, dumb to even joke about. Yeah, zoned out looking at her pictures, of course. Aren't you? No, no, I'm playing the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right, I was well, also yeah. thinking about what I can and can't say, as I do whenever we go to these edgy articles. Yeah, it's always a tough... Take it's all, highlighter. always, always a tightrope. Well, she went on Dr. Phil. Uh, to talk about it, and um, you know, she she goes into how she was manipulated, and she says, um, I mean, here's the crazy thing as well. Keep in mind, she's a teacher. She gets sacked from her teaching job. Um, what does she do next? She goes to work as a stripper using the pseudonym Bambi. <laughs> Oh, this show's a fucking state. Isn't it, mate? Why would you call put, it? Uh, don't even ask. Just, just <laughs> put me, just put me down. <laughs> it's uh, can't be asked. So yeah, she she goes to work as a stripper with a stage name Bambi because that's where you go in it. Hey, I'm a teacher. Yep, yep. Here's a bit of science. Here's a bit of fucking maths. Ah, uh, now I'm stripping. That's like how does that work? The American like, dream that is, man. You, you might be onto something. The student twisted my brain into accepting this relationship, she told Dr. Phil. Did not. He did so, did not. <laughs> he did so with such intelligence and such an elevated vocabulary <laughs> that I was completely duped by the whole facade, she said, trying to prove she had a vocabulary. Yeah, I'd love to see the text of what it was, but I bet it was just like, I would like to fuck you now. <laughs> and Your fit. <laughs> Bumping teacher, she's fit. <laughs> Many people see him as the victim and me as the perpetrator. Almost as if she was put in a position of fucking trust and had a duty of care. You know, part, but apart from that, nothing to worry about here. From a psychological standpoint and from every other standpoint, I feel like I'm the victim. Right about the time she was facing jail, probably. <laughs> right yeah. about that. Right about that time. He burned my life. To the ground. Now, hang on, it gets better. Uh, they, she gives an example of some of the texts here. Um, Trust me, it's not difficult to be a caring boyfriend. You guys can rate this line. Trust me, it's not difficult to be a caring boyfriend, especially to someone as magnificent as you. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty... Good. Yeah, you think that's smooth? No, you I'm having joking. that? Oh no, no but I, I, I've lost all sense of perspective, mate. <laughs> I, I've been, I've been on the internet on. for too long. I don't even know a bit. I don't want someone as serious as that. You fucking boring melt. <laughs> 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 Stop being such a fucking wet flannel. You fucking. No, I have to watch from saying no, mate. I'm on edge. You. Uh, he, he said. He nearly said meth. <laughs> <laughs> meth. Um, yeah. Absolute. Right. So, uh, let, let, she was attracted to him because of his mind, which she <laughs> described as more mature than his age. I was completely head over heels, she told Inside Edition. Then, just for no reason, it goes into some <laughs> sex, sex. Yeah, Why is that yeah, happening? Yeah. Yeah, why is this here? Like, just mad titillation from nowhere. She said she met the teen nearly every day to have sex in her car, which she parked in a public park. I mean, why not, right? They also visited his parents' homes. We met several times a week. Not every time was to have sex. There were times we would just sit and talk. I thought in my mind this was some sort of real relationship. Now... It does outline it here. In Iowa, teachers are prohibited from sexual contact with students until 30 days after graduation. Then it's fucking game on. Then it's game on. Uh, even if the student is at least 18. So this is the thing, right? Dr. Phil knows what's up, right? She sent this 17-year-old student naked pictures of herself. She's a teacher in the school. She didn't see a problem with this, mate. She didn't see how this could back. This can't go wrong. Yeah, this can't go wrong. I'm never a teacher. Never heard of young kids Eat being a student. <laughs> yeah, no, that's <laughs> never happened. <laughs> 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 he, he has got a wicked vocabulary. 
Nas got that <laughs> cab. So, <laughs> yeah, Dr. Phil says to her, looks her straight in the eye, you have got to be dumber than a box of rocks to share naked pictures with a 17-year-old boy. That's Dr. fucking Phil! <laughs> and then she said, he knew that I was vulnerable. Knew so, that you were easy, man. <laughs> That's what he knew. Regardless, the bottom line is there, uh, you know, she's um, kind of faced the music now. She has been unable to find a teaching job, unsurprisingly. There's, there were students all over. I went, please, please, <laughs> please. I have a big vocabulary up. too. Please, my vocabulary is banging. It, <laughs> no one would ever cheat on you because you are amazing. He's in there. He's smooth as fuck. <laughs> right, and uh, you know that th- this is a. Uh, it, go- it goes on to say like this. Uh, you know, it ends with this doesn't have to ruin your life. And then uh, the Doctor Phil episode was like, "Hey, we're gonna get you, uh, gonna get you some counselling and find a different job, not stripper, hopefully." Uh, right, this is a belter. Always a big fan of the New York Post. It just doesn't give a fuck. It's it's one up from the National Enquirer and proud of it. But this is unbelievable. Uh, this what this was reported in a few other outlets. Uh, we just like to have a bit of variety on our. You got uh, a nice top- picture of Anthony Weiner on top right, boy. <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't actually. Oh yeah, no, no, there. <laughs> there he is. There he is, Anthony Weiner <laughs> again. New York Post <laughs> straight doesn't give a fuck. Uh, anyway, <laughs> headline: Where's the chicken? Woman sues Kentucky Fried Chicken for twenty million dollars over false advertising. This is the report that you love to write when you're a journalist. A Hudson Valley woman is finger licking mad <laughs> at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Claiming it's understuffed buckets are for the birds. Fucking hell. Yeah, I know, it? This is like a one or one on how to write shit tabloid <laughs> journals. Um, so basically, Anna Wurzberger of Hopewell Junction says she bought a $20 bucket of chicken from KFC. Now, I don't know about you, right? Like, I, I, Obviously, I'm not going to shill KFC. Full disclosure, they don't sponsor me. I'd fucking love it if they did. No, that would be banging, mate. Imagine how sound my life would be. Oh, mate. Yeah, mate. But it, it would be like, it would be like some Mad Mad Max episode. I'm in the pan. <laughs> you're over in the corner, like on a chain. I'm just occasionally throwing you a bit of chicken. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it would be like that. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but obviously, the other 19 pieces or whatever would be for me. W- would, would fuck you off as well and give you a drumstick. But. <laughs> Whoa, what a cunt. Yeah, what well, I couldn't like could have had a big old breast drumstick for Sam. <laughs> right, anyway, so she says that she bought a twenty dollar bucket of chicken from KFC over the summer and was disappointed to find it looked much different than what's in the advertisements. It's the classic, you know, fast food doesn't look like how it's advertised. I came home and said, "Where's the chicken?" <laughs> I thought I was going to have a couple of meals. She told the post, "They say it feeds the whole family. They're showing a bucket." That's overflowing with chicken, the 64-year-old widow said. You get half a bucket, that's false advertising. It doesn't feed the whole family. They're small pieces. Right? So she rang up, she rang them up, rang up their headquarters, which are here in Georgia, apparently, uh, and was told the chicken was portrayed prominently on the commercial. So people can see the chicken like overflowing out the top of the bucket, you know? And said, if you want the public to look at your chicken, put it in a dish. It's bullshit. <laughs> Where's I, the chicken? I expect to get what you're telling me. So she is now in talks with lawyers. She's actually hired a lawyer. This is legit. Uh, and she is demanding that uh, she gets compensated and forces KFC to change its advertising. The company even tried to make amends, right? They sent her uh, two gift certificates saying, you know, we're sorry. Uh, that you're not satisfied, and I don't know how much they were for. It doesn't say in this report. Guessing not twenty million dollars, yeah. uh, but you know, two gift certificates. So it's like, hey, you, we were sorry you didn't get the ch- all the chicken you wanted from this bucket. We'll have some free chicken, and that'll make up. No, fuck you. We go in a court. Where's the chicken? <laughs> so KFC haven't really released a statement about this. They've just said the lawsuit's meritless. I'm going to watch that one with a lot of fucking interest, brother. Yeah, because also interesting that she used to work in fish kill correction facility. Yeah, Quite big. Yeah. yeah, big fish kill. Nice. <laughs> All right, now 
It's been a bit silly this episode, hasn't it? This'll fucking this'll change it. This'll depress you, mate. This is brutal. This is like one of the this is like one of the most fucking hardcore stories I have ever fucking heard. It is beyond a joke. The headline tells doesn't even do it justice how fucking hardcore it is. Man killed wife's father and sister to lure her to their funeral, then murdered her at the service. This is in El Paso in Texas. Horrible fucking story. So basically, um, I'll just read it to you. It, it beggars belief. This is Samuel Velasco Gorilla. He faces life in prison after he executed this crazy plot with the help of his two siblings in the U.S. town of El Paso in Texas. Mr. Velasco, 41, wanted to kill his wife, Ruth Segredo, so she couldn't testify against him in a sexual assault case. Now, again, obviously, trying not to be frivolous, but let's just weigh this up. Sexual assault, bunch of murders. He might have gone a bit overboard, Sam, is what I'm trying to say. Bit aggro. Might have, might have, you know, perhaps not really thought this through. He hired a hitman in 2008 to murder Miss Segredo's father in Juarez, the city in Mexico which shares a border with El Paso, in an attempt to lure her to the funeral. But that didn't work. So a month later, Mr. Velasco's sister-in-law was also found dead in the same city. And then Miss Segredo was killed when she went to her sister's funeral procession. Now, you know what they say about Texas juries, but this is how open and shut this was. They took three hours. The right? fuck? Three hours, man. <laughs> this is like a triple murder. That's one hour per murder. The jury took three hours to convict Mr. I think about the evidence here. Like, I think he just got up and caught him. Yeah, did it, right? Peace. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, banter, right, Tana? Anything but killing me, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll I'll take anything but the death penalty if that's all right with you. The jury took just three hours to convict Mr. Velasco of seven separate accounts in what prosecutors called an evil plot. He hasn't been sentenced yet. He doesn't get sentenced until January. Mr. Velasco's lawyer said he would appeal the decision while also saying, fucking hell. So there you go. Uh, mad fucking story, mad story. And of course, did have help um, from his, his siblings. It was also picked up by Vice News, just as an extra little tidbit of information. And uh, his brother, Emmanuel, and sister, Dahlia, were also allegedly at the head of a drug trafficking gang <sighs> called the Velasco Criminal Enterprise. Yeah, probably shouldn't name after yourself, by the way, but... <laughs> If it was yeah, so yeah, bad branding, isn't it? Like that cunt last week. No snitches. Yeah, Escobar's coke. Don't ask yeah, who yeah, it yeah. is. Exactly. Then. Fuck you. But yeah, absolutely crazy. So just goes to show, some people just don't give a fuck. Now, middle. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get back to being silly for a moment. Uh, you've, uh, this is where I need you to play that video, but this is going to be difficult. So this was brought to my attention. Um, there's a Facebook page called Your Soul Council, uh, which is it's it's brilliant. If you've ever lived in you know the poor parts of England, like me and Sam, uh, poor parts of Britain, I should say, um, you you this will totally ring true to you, right? Uh, now, if you scroll down to, let me just find it to, for you. Where is it? Where is it? Where the fuck is it? This is terribly planned. This should never happen on a podcast, should it? Nearly there, I think. <laughs> Good link. Uh, could have just linked it to you, couldn't yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah. Prob- probably should have done that. Hang on, mate. What are we looking for? What's it called? There it is. There it is. So it's this one here. <laughs> October 22nd. Good show. Good show, yeah. Well, we, we can cut this out. Where's the link? Not gonna there is. That, that should That's be the, the wrong link. link. It's not. Right, sound. No worries. <laughs> Just scroll down. It's right, October, scroll in, right. O- yeah, o- October 22nd. Right, is it? The government should probably just lend yes. it, right? Yeah, just watch this video. Just watch the whole thing. I'm going to start watching it. You tell me when you're playing it to the peeps. Yeah, hang on. Hang on. Me, right. Three, right. two, one, play. 
employed Kent woman says that the taxpayer should pay hundreds of pounds for a wedding because she believes it's her human right to be a bride. Anna Broom from Gillingham says she wants a loan from the government because she and her fiancé can't work because of ill health. Critics say it's not what the public purse should be spent on. Simon Jones reports. Dreaming of the big day, but Anna Broom hasn't had a job for the past 15 years after being declared unfit to work due to depression and back problems because of her weight. The couple received benefits totaling around £800 a month. I think it's a human right that a woman should be able to get married to who she wants to because every little girl dreams about their perfect day. And I want all my family there and like, like every little girl does. I don't believe the government has to pay me lots. I just want like 900, that's it. And so I can pay it back like 20 quid a week. She says at her dream wedding, she'd have a horse and carriage, a white dress followed by a honeymoon in Acapulco. <laughs> but she says in reality, she'd settle for a registry office with a 900 pound loan from the government. <laughs> the couple have been together for six years and they say ever since he proposed here outside Primark, they have felt that a wedding would give them a greater sense of well-being. But can you not save yourself to get the money for that? Nah. Look at his head. What's wrong with his head? Oh, mate. Looks like a for him, Jim. I don't think she should. I wish the government give me hundreds of pounds. The couple say it's not a demand for help, it's simply a request. Why should the taxpayer fund your wedding? Well, they shouldn't really, but I'm just saying it'd be nice. But if they can't, then they can't. <laughs> the government does offer budgetary loans for essentials like home improvements and clothes. Anna Brew believes it should be extended, particularly as recent studies have suggested marriage can boost mental and physical health. Simon Jones, BBC South East today, Gillingham. There you are. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> Oh, well, Why is it everyone's face is melted off where they live, but is <laughs> <laughs> it been some sort of nuclear explosion? But... Chernobyl, isn't it? Like, because like, oh, oh, let me just show right. Look at this Mate. old guy's face. Right. What, 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 I'm what, just what, showing what? him now, right? So you look at the guy who's talking his face. Look how fucked his head is, right? Then we go to town. Look how fucked her face is, right? And then watch this old guy. What's happened to him? He looks like he's gone 470 rounds with Tyson, not who, man. Yeah. <laughs> he's just been wrecked. I don't know, man. I, I, I can't he's answer, fighting but... his skin to see out his eyes, but... <laughs> it's an inner battle. What makes that fucking report, though? <coughs> fucking up. Uh, that has Back done four, cool, Yeah, <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Like, going, bro, go down in Acapulco. Like, what the fuck is that, mate? She wants a carriage. <laughs> I'm doing the Jimmy Savile thing at every show. She wants a carriage, a white dress, and a honeymoon in Acapulco. Like, come <laughs> on, like, don't take the fucking piss. That's taking the piss. I mean, the whole thing's taking the piss, but don't take the piss while you're taking the piss. That's unfucking. Like, the fact, where you just went, could you save it? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he looked so confused by the concept, didn't he? Could you just save your money and then, like, have the wedding in the future? We we spend it on food and that? Right, okay. <laughs> Sound. See the problem. See the problem. Fuck me, mate. Come on. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Right, so we'll we'll go over this one quickly. Uh, I, I'm worried about the Shore Dragon. Um, this is a report on Breitbart, of course. Where else? Uh, again, by the wonderful Charlie Nash, former co-worker of mine, good guy, uh, does good work. And this was um, th th there was a free iPhone game that was uh, created by a, a, a pro-Trump internet personality called Baked Alaska. The game was called Build the Wall, the game, and it had a cameo of Pepe the Frog in it, and uh, Apple basically banned it. They banned it. It wasn't allowed. So in all, again, this just further reinforces this gibberish about Pepe the Frog. That's Pepe the Cartoon Frog, 
uh, being a, a racist symbol, which it absolutely isn't. Uh, my, my advice to you is if anyone ever tells you it is, just never talk to them again. They're, they're absolute fucking cretins. There is nothing about Pepe the Frog that is racist, nothing. Uh, but um, Apple have put it up there. I mean, you know, Apple have got previous with this, mate. I mean, get your head around this, right? You know the American Civil War, mm-hmm. right? You know, fucking North and South and all that, right? Well, obviously, if you were to depict the Civil War, you might need to talk about the Confederacy. They were pretty important. Mm-hmm in the American Civil War. And they had a flag, you see. They had a flag called the Confederate flag, which suddenly, a few years ago, I think, two years ago, was just deemed to be unbelievably racist. Now, yes, again, some racists definitely wielded that flag, waved it around, said racist things. Certainly, there were some people who gave it the whole, the South will rise again and will you know, secede and all that gibberish, yes. But... Not sure that everyone who ever wielded the flag, waved the flag around, was racist. Not sure. But anyway, okay, let's say it is a racist flag. Let's say it's a racist symbol. All right. You know, that means I've got to go and throw my Pantera albums out now. That's awkward. Love Pantera. Love Dimebag Darrell. He's dead. He got shot. <laughs> uh, but all right. Okay, cool. I've got, I've got to get rid of that and pretend that that, that, that wasn't there. Um, but here's the thing. On Apple... A bunch of people wanted to make Civil War, you know, reenactment games, like historical Mm turn-based strategy or real-time strategy games based around the American Civil War. Um, And if it had the Confederate flag anywhere in the game, the games were banned. Can can you believe that? (laughs) Can you believe that? That is like literally saying you can't have a World War Two game if the Nazi flag's in it. How the fuck are we ever going to tell the story of World War Two if we don't mention the fucking Nazis? <laughs> How's, how does that work? Uh, a bunch of shit happened over here, and you don't want to know about that. And, and, and that's what fucking worries me. Uh, you know, to, to be vaguely serious for a moment. What really worries me is this idea that, you know, th- there's that famous saying, isn't there, that those, um, you know, those who ignore the past are doomed to repeat it. And we- we're literally at a stage now where, you know, you've got people that are demanding, you know, you- you've got black students demanding segregation rather than integration. Almost completely, it's as if they're not taught about the civil rights movement, which is, you know, I know that's not true. Um, You've got people now who don't want to be triggered by seeing things that were historically racist. And now you've got big tech companies that don't want people to have interactive simulations, interactive games with an educational aspect to them because you know th- that element of the history one of the elements of the reasons behind the civil war w- was the ab- abolition of slavery obviously and, and and you know one one side was very much for slavery and the other side was against it and you apparently you we just got to pretend none of that happened because it's too triggering it's too much of a problem don't show that flag don't have those games let's never talk about that chapter in history well how how fucking how pathetic so very strange. And this is a continuation of that theme. Now Pepe the Frog, you know, is, is going to be banned by, by Apple and it'll be something else and then something else and then something else. And eventually whole swathes of history uh, will have just completely disappeared. Now I understand it because I guarantee you guys, if you do this, I've been looking into a few things actually. I was introduced by a colleague to this uh, website which basically is called opensecrets.org. It shows donations to American political parties um, and, 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 and where it goes. I had no idea that this kind of thing was open and documented in America because obviously I'm not from here. Uh, and that's incredible. And if you go and you look at these things, you can see the companies, the tech companies that donate to you know the, 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 the democratic uh, campaign, in particular cl- the Clinton campaign in this election cycle. Well, obviously, they want Pepe the Frog to disappear because how fucking embarrassing is it that a presidential candidate has declared war on a cartoon frog? 
Around about the same time she's declaring war on Russia, of course. Almost like she's out of her mind. <laughs> well, you said it, not me, mate. You said it, not me. So, that's your opinion. Uh, <laughs> Throw in the caveat, that's your opinion. Right. And here's mine. the thing, right? Just to follow on from this fucking point, almost as if we planned it and didn't just throw these links into a Google Doc and just said, fuck it. Right? This is bonkers, mate. This, this is fucking balmy. So, the UK Army, the British Armed Forces, apologised for being racist. Now, you're like, well, Richard, what could this mean? Because, actually, there is institutional racism in the Army, and, you know, they don't, they don't have a very representative uh, armed forces, do they? So, th this has got to be something serious. Well, it's not, is it? Because this is a soldier who was on a training exercise in Costa Rica. He was in camouflage. Now, I don't know if you've been in the military, Sam. I'm going to guess you haven't. No, I haven't. Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm from a, I'm from a military family. Got lots of military people in my Except family. You, of I course. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to be a fat, lazy <laughs> asshole instead. If I, 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 mean. I, I, I was I was given an option. Uh, you know. Well, no, actually, I did, I did I did try and get in the Marines, the Royal Marines. I had a friend, obviously, who was joining. And I thought Royal Marines, it sounded a bit baller, right? Like it was, it was a, you know, it's the cool sort of soldiers. Failed the medical based on lung capacity and passed all the physical stuff at the time. Obviously, you couldn't now. Uh, but, uh, you know, fucking couldn't get in. And next, next door to the naval recruitment office was the army recruitment office. And they were like, yeah, you can join the Green Howard straight away. I think it was the Green Howard. And, and I was like, well, what happens there then? Where do you get based? And I'm like, oh, you'll go straight to Ireland to be dodging car bombs. Nah. I uh, think I might try this whole college thing and, and see how that works <laughs> out. I might go to uni. Might, might, might go to a shit uni. Anyway, so they were in the army, right? You have to be camouflaged. Now, camouflage, Sam, is when you make yourself look like something so people can't see you. But it was, you know, describing it simply. So, you know, it's like, for example, the way that you look like some jobless scum. Yeah. And, really and am only scum. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, so when you, when you go down to the four winds, no one notices you. Yeah. You blend it in, you camouflage, right? Now, when you're in the jungle... What soldiers do is because skin color, any skin color, has this shine to it. This this sheen, like what's happening which, on your head right now. See that? Yeah. Good, see that lens flare on the top left? Yeah, yeah. Just that. Eee, right. <laughs> and obviously, if I want to shoot somebody and I'm having a look out into some leaves and that, and I see someone's greasy forehead having a shine. <laughs> I'm going to put a bullet right in that greasy forehead, aren't I? And just blow the back of your fucking head off, right? So what they do is they wear this grease paint, this camo paint, and make them, you know, and there's green and brown, and they use earthen colors to blend in and get rid of that shine and, you know, take, get rid of that light. Now, that shouldn't be a problem. That makes sense. So the British Army put a tweet out. Being a soldier in the jungle requires a robust sense of humor. It fucking does. Being in the army full stop requires a sense of humor. You get shit equipment. You're getting fucking wrecked all day doing, you know, press ups for fun, um, and 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 that's that, right? So it does require a sense of humor. And you can see in the, in the photo, the guy is camouflaged, having a shoot, and he's got a funny look on his face. Like, Ooh, I'm having a shoot. Ooh, killing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right now. The, the British Armed Forces got accused of being racist because that is blackface. Blackface. <laughs> it's not even black, it's green. If yeah, you they, they, it, you can see it's green. They are comparing... This is why context really is important. And if you let idiots drive the fucking narrative you will end up with nonsense like this and everyone does it and everyone's being too sensitive towards other people's feelings and this is what happens. Now, context is very important, yeah? Man with black face paint on and big white lips doing jazz hands on on stage, 
that's racist. That's a black and white minstrel show. That's inappropriate. Man in the jungle with green and brown paint on his face to blend in, not racist, is it? What race has green and brown and khaki and beige skin tones? Michael Jackson didn't even look that fucked up when he had that disease. That isn't (laughs) a race. It's the ends. Yeah, exactly. It's racist towards tree beard. (laughs) Who, by the way, just as an an aside, he got ripped off in that. I've never talked about this with you, Sam. You're a fan of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? Yeah, kind of. He he got ripped the fuck off. He did. Why? Because... Right, you know, in in the, right, okay, in the film, he like got he gets mad tricked into doing the right thing. Yeah, and it's kind of like that in the book, but it's not like that. He's not that much of a prick about it. All they really do in the book is like trick him into walking a certain route, and he sees that Saruman's wrecking all the trees, and he gets proper fucking Trigger. aggro about it as he would. Yeah, mad trick. Get off my mitts. Yeah. But, like, in the book, they make him out to be a real, like, in, you know, proper arsehole, I thought. Done, and that was yeah. the... Yeah, and that was the problem with the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy, like, for me. They made everyone an arsehole apart from Aragorn. Yeah. They had that whole weird homoerotic thing going on with Gimli and Legolas, which is fine. Yeah. You know, we're going to make Gimli, who was a double hard bastard in the books, like a mad hard bastard. He's keeping up with an elf, right? Who's got a bow and arrow, and he's running around, waddling around, swinging an axe, and he's still dropping bodies. He's still fucking killing people. And they use him for comic relief. Don't toss me in front of the elf. Like, what's this? <laughs> like? What's this? Like? See, I've got mad problems with that film. It's like the only person, and like the amount of times they like edit things in which aren't in the book, where it's Aragorn just runs over the hill and kills somebody to save someone else. It's like, didn't happen. He's a big enough hero. He is like the entire fucking, you know, the fate of the entire race of man is like, you know, there's enough going on. There's enough going on. You don't have to make him any more fucking special. Fucking come on. It's like giving Harry Potter that he's sick of football or something. Doesn't need it. Doesn't need need the boost. You'll never put a reference, just like I've never read them. Don't care. <laughs> You've never read Harry Potter? Oh, mate. I was I'm, I'm fucking old hated. enough to be your dad. Yeah, for people that overly hate Harry Potter, it ain't bad. I like Harry Potter. Just became stylish to hate it, I think. No, I just, look, it's a kid's book. I'm not a kid. So why would I read it? <laughs> yeah, true that. I was a kid when it came out. I've got an excuse. There you go. See, it's acceptable. I don't mind. I don't mind. What used to fucking piss me off when I was at university and I was like reading an actual book, you know what I mean? And and I'd be like traveling on the train to and from, and I would see people my age having a read of Harry Potter, <laughs> loads of them, uniform. What the fuck, <laughs> you, right? Here I am with with something mean, meaningful. You're reading Harry Potter, are you? You're you're 22 and you're reading Harry Potter, are you? All right, all right, I'm out. <laughs> It's been fun. It's been fun. Planet. I'm reading Charles Bukowski. You've got J.K. Rowling. Yeah, exactly. Get it's me out. Out. <laughs> Get me out of it. <laughs> so anyway, turns out blackface is racist, but not every time you put something on your face that happens to be black is it is that racist. Nah. So uh, it's, it's it's a tough concept now. This man, this is unreal. This is unreal. This is like something you do. So, headline, <laughs> local. <laughs> oh, mate, I haven't opened all the links yet, so I'm surprised that's a beaut. <laughs> local oh. sculptors watched baby Jesus' head leaves Canadian parishioners bemused. So, basically, what happened here was there was, uh, you know, the, the mother with the baby of Christ, I don't know, and whatever you fucking quaint superstitions are um and and i think it's mary maybe i don't know and she's having a hold of the baby asked. christ and his head he was asked yeah. his head <laughs> his head his head has been knocked off right it got vandalized and knocked off they did a fucking you know jebediah springfield on it and they were like well what are we gonna do it's fucking to work at art this it's gonna take ages so turns out that the the, the local um artist 
Heather Wise was having a walk around and noticed that the infant Jesus was missing her head, and she was sad. That's what it says here, sad in inverted commas. So she offered, she said, hey, I'm a local artist. I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll replace baby Jesus' head. And obviously, you know, it's really weird, right? Because even though we all know the church got that money, church always is mad poor, isn't it? They whip a plate round at the end, like, you know, always looking for freebies. Oh, the roof's leaking. Hang on, there's fucking gold everywhere. What's going on here? Take anyway. that cross down, that's worth four grand. Melt that fucking down, right? <laughs> Uh, no, I can't do that. Anyway, so she had a go. She had a go. Fair enough to her. <laughs> the descriptions. I haven't sure we've done the picture yet. See, I was saving it. Yeah, you got it. So this is what she come up with. Have a look at baby G's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Looks like, his, why has he got, like, tentacles on his head? But, it's, like, he's like King Starfish or something. <laughs> I don't even understand. Like, I am. Uh, mer- <laughs> looks like a murloc, but that's really it's like. <laughs> it's on, and she made it as well out of just low grade clay. <laughs> so it's already started to erode in the rain. Um, so <laughs> the priest said, priests, forgiving, uh, said, to be fair, it is a first try. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm just looking at it. If she just got white stone, right, took away yeah. the tentacles, it would be shit, but it would be human. <laughs> like, Mate, the proportions are just all off. I don't know how big his eyes are, but he's got fish Yeah, his eyes. eyes are mad, like, <laughs> his, his eyes are out of control. Like, well, at least he'd look human, but why are you just do it in red? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know what's going on there. Like, yeah, It's beyond a joke. Beyond a fucking joke. So sticking with religious uh, gibberish. Uh, this is the news that in Malaysia, hot dogs have got to be renamed because hot dogs uh, are offensive. The term hot dogs, because in, in in Islamic religion, dogs are considered unclean, and the name can't be related to anything that requires halal certification. So. Basically, they've got to come up with something else. Sausage and, burgers. Yep. They don't know what it is. <laughs> um, there was a... Uh, there was a... Uh, have you ever seen that franchise store? You might have seen it. Auntie Anne's. You ever seen that in no. airports? Never seen it? No, no. Well, anyway, they, in Malaysia, they wouldn't give it halal certification, even though they produce the meat to halal standards using halal methods, which I always forget what the fuck that is. Like, you have to fucking... Something about slicing its throat. No, no, no. It, it, no it's, a bit, it's a bit more mad than that because you have to fucking put the animal upright and obviously cut its throat, bleed it out, but as the animal dies, you have to whisper a prayer in its ear. Sound. Like, like, like you know, he's not having a shit enough day. <laughs> no, I've got to deal with your pish in my lugs. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. <laughs> I'm having a good time. And, you know, the compromise was that some people don't always... You know, they don't believe it has to be conscious to hear the prayer. As long as you say the prayer, it's okay. And that's the compromise for human rights. This is one of the uh, animal rights. Sorry. This is one of the reasons why, you know, a lot of uh, animal rights, forward thinking animal rights countries want to ban halal. It's not an attack on Islam or attack on religion. It's that if you do it to the traditional standard, it is inarguably cruel to the animal. Fact. It, it, it has to be. The animal must be conscious at the point where it, you slit its throat and it bleeds out. Uh, because you have to fucking whisper a prayer in it here. Anyway, Auntie Anne's uh, have a thing called uh, the pretzel dog. And that's off that's off the menu. <laughs> you can't have a halal certification in Malaysia. Uh, but they've said, sorry, right, we'll just call it pretzel sausage. Got them. Easy. So there you go, easy. So I, I just thought, a bit mad, isn't it? Considering, you know, Malaysia is meant to be this moderate Muslim nation. Now all of a sudden... Hot dogs, which have been fine, totally fine, been around for a while, the old hot dog. Fancy nope. one, actually. Obviously. <laughs> of course he does. Just wanted to give you up to me, call you a fat mess, man. Surprised you missed out, man. 
Nah, it's all right. And again, similar shit going on. This is over in Norway. The Minister of Integration over in Norway um, has had people calling for her to resign I, after she said, and this is like the most reasonable thing I, I think I've ever heard anyone say, and yet somehow it's got to cost you your job. Um, she said integration is a two-way thing, you know, which it is by definition, right? Like if, if one person makes you integrate with them and takes nothing of you, that's assimilation. So she said that uh, those who come to Norway – need to adapt to our society, which is fine. And she just said, here, for, you know, if, if, if you're Islamic, understand that here we eat pork, we drink alcohol, and women will show their face. And, and that's that. Right? That's what she said. Now, I've been to Norway. Yes. They do. They do all those things. Yeah. Um, and that was that. Now, she did, t to be fair, say she wouldn't personally choose to employ someone wearing a full uh, face veil, the kneecap, right? Which some people say is racist. I, I don't think it's racist. I, I, think, I think there's a lot of very good legal reasons why I don't want people walking around in full face masks. Sorry. But... That's what she's. That's what she said. And, and and again, we've talked about this on the show before. There are there's a there's only a handful of countries that even insist on that. You wouldn't. I don't even think it's legal in Turkey. So you know, uh, it, there's. I, I don't see that as a racist statement personally. Uh, but anyway, loads of people calling for a job uh, because they deliberately misinterpreted it as saying. Muslims have to eat pork, have to drink alcohol, and must show their face if they come here, which isn't what she said, obviously. And and people have been have been accusing her of, of of you know trying to really make Muslims um again. No, it's not what's going on. She just said that this is what we do here. If you come here, don't you know? Don't be culture shocked. Try and be a bit more accepting of the differences. Uh, but very bizarre. Loads again. There's a, there's a bunch of quotes in the article. I won't read them all, you know, because we're pushed for time. Uh, but someone literally said, uh, and this was a Norwegian crim criminologist, uh, said that she should reconsider her position and said if she does not understand the complexity and does not have the expertise to deal with these social issues in a good way, it's time to ask: Should she reconsider her position? And then the Norwegian Labour Party politician. Uh, Zanib Al Samari um, said, "If you are to be an integration minister, you must begin to integrate. Do not frighten and separate people." Well, I think it's quite the contrary. She's saying, "Don't be frightened," uh, you know. And, and anyway, she had to come out and release a statement saying, "Of course, I don't mean Muslims should be forced to drink alcohol." I mean, the the madness of that, the absolute madness. So, yep, yeah. gibberish gibberish here you go sam did you know mate you're disabled yeah no but did, did, there's, a, <laughs> there's, a, yeah, there's a new one after a while there's a new one here you go this is the express i mean i will i mean obviously we've picked out some dubious sources here but you know <laughs> We, we, we draw from liberal and right-wing media alike. The Express has been on a downward trajectory for some time, but I thought this was a fucking bonkers story. Uh, this is people who fail to find a sexual partner will now qualify as disabled, Fuck according that. to uh, new, new, new guidelines. World Health Organization. Yep, so th this is basically what they're saying is that uh, it, it used to be that if you tried to get pregnant, uh, if you've been having a year of unprotected sex, that wasn't considered a disability. That's going to be up there. Uh, and basically, if you're unable to find a suitable sexual partner or you're lacking a sexual relationship and you can't conceive, you're now going to be qualified as disabled. And uh, anyone who wants to have kids and is unable to do so, by you know natural means uh is 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 going to qualify as disabled which I, I you know there's too many of us sam 
<laughs> what, disabled? No, people. All right. <laughs> too many of us. Just too many of us, you know? We're, we're great and all that. Just too many of us. Not sure I want people getting extra help to make more of us, to really. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we should, you know, like Bill Hicks used to say, let's get the food and air deal sorted out first. Let's <laughs> let's deal with that, right? And then and then we'll have more people. And when Bill Hicks said that back in the nineties, eh, it was about half of us. So <laughs> you know, we we haven't listened. We haven't listened. So there you go. So yeah, basically this comes back to the idea that conception is a human right. And uh, if you if you if you can't have it, you're disabled. And you deserve all the help uh, that that can possibly be given to you. And of course, that's a, a preposterous position in an overpopulated world. So this is uh, this is something interesting. We, we obviously talk a lot about um, racism uh, in this. Again, Heat Street picked up on this everyday feminism. Uh, which is uh, basically they're like this social media, you know, like, like some BuzzFeed shit, you yeah, know, like BuzzFeed, but even worse. If you can yeah, yeah, that. yeah, but, yeah. I know it, it is super hardcore. Everyday feminism. You've probably seen it on your Facebook feed. Uh, they're always out there, uh, and basically, it's uh, it, it promotes this idea of intersectional uh, feminism, which is like as described here in Heat Street, you know, it's an accurate description. It's third wave feminism, uh, but with the idea that all institutions that exist are somehow inherently oppressive and designed to put down anyone who isn't straight all and or white. And the idea that the patriarchy is a very real thing. So, you know, for example, me and Sam are in the patriarchy. We, we don't have any institutional power, not that I'm aware of, uh, but apparently uh, just by virtue of being white and being male, I hate everyone who isn't also white and male, and I'm, I'm in some group that gives me loads of special privileges that I really should start cashing in on. I, I haven't really... Yeah, if they're giving away free shit, but let me know. I'll, I'll have a bag. Mm. I'll have a bag in my lunchbox. <laughs> So they put this uh, program, they're, they're, they're doing a program now, which is to help white Americans uh, heal. Uh, and that, uh, healing's good, right? Like, healing's a good thing. But let's just have a look at what they're saying. And it's they want you to heal from your toxic whiteness. Toxic whiteness. This is a 10 week online training program for white people how not to be white <laughs> so it, it just read uh right i, I mean i can't read too much because i'm gonna get triggered as fuck, i'm gonna right? get sick <laughs> no yeah mate it's bad it's it's worse than he fucked uh on any given week a video of police violence Another one of Trump's comments and other blatant evidence of systemic racism spreads across the media and internet. The racism in these words and actions is so clear to you, but you've seen how so many white people, including your friends and family, are refusing to acknowledge that reality. Their defensiveness may leave you feeling angry and at a loss for words. You've realized that white supremacy is so normalized that many white people, even if they believe racism is wrong, Fight to deny the existence and impact of racism on people of color, even though people of color tirelessly pointed out. You've also noticed how characteristics associated with white people, particularly rich white people, are considered normal and good. You get that this often unconscious notion of whiteness is used to put down people of color and make them the other and bad in comparison. More than ever before, you're understanding just how prevalent and harmful racism is. I mean, I think everybody knows that it is, right? I don't. I don't think anyone's ever disputed. I think even racists know. Yeah, I think even racists know it's bad. <laughs> yeah, like, I think even racists know it's harmful. That's kind of the point. You know, like it's kind of the point. Like, yeah, yeah, we we know it. We know it. It sucks. <laughs> we know racism sucks. That's why we do it because we're racists. <laughs> right? That, that, that's like the real difference now. How you can tell if somebody's racist or not. Uh, and how white privilege protects you from its harm and from even noticing it in the first place. So it goes on and talks about things you can do to address racism. 
you may find yourself wrestling. Uh, uh, I wrestle all the time with shit like this, Sam. You may find yourself wrestling with questions like, how can I make sure I don't accidentally say something that's racist and hurts people I care about? <laughs> I know I need to speak up against racism more, but when does speaking up cross the line into speaking over people of color? Can't win. <laughs> I know what. Can't win. Oh, you were right to speak up, but you were wrong to speak up at this time because you were diminishing the ability for people of color to speak up for themselves. Oh, right. It's not a minefield. I see. What do, what do I do? do i guess it should be what do i do when i discover i've been subconsciously stereotyping and judging people of color what do i do don't do it stop being racist probably yeah, yeah stop, stop doing it maybe i don't know i feel so guilty about having white privilege but am i really willing to give up that privilege well i can't can i it's white privilege yeah, you won't I don't think that works you won't let me change my skin color what do i do catch 22 I have to join the army. <laughs> How can I figure out what I should be doing to fight racism without burdening people of color by constantly asking them what I should do? I mean, put it this way, right? Obviously, we've got a lot of black friends, right? A lot of uh, you know, a lot of friends from all different backgrounds. Uh, you know, diverse friends. Fucking hell, like esports is a diverse scene. I work in a media company. That's a diverse scene. I live in Atlanta. That's a diverse city. <clears throat> so. The, the idea that I would ever turn to any of them at any point and go, hey, um, you're, you're black, right? Y yeah, yeah. What should I be doing to fight racism, Doug? <laughs> I mean, come on, like. Who, who, what the fuck? That person's going to be like, that. that's like a racist conversation yeah, to have. That's going to make people so fucking uncomfortable. How do I deal with the fact that I'm scared to talk to other white people about racism when they often get really angry at me and call me a racist when I bring it up? And these are just some of the questions. Anyway, it goes on. You should have a read and then get into the program because they have training sessions. You get two, three-hour sessions on learning how to apply compassionate activism to white supremacy you get six 90 minute sessions which guide you through the healing process step by step you get one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with the people who put the course together via skype it doesn't say what you get coached in and you get to join a super secret private Facebook group where you get to feel real, get to feel really smug and superior about how fucking awesome and liberal and progressive you are. You also get lifetime access to the video recordings and transcriptions for each session, and you get email support. And that will only cost you, mate, for ten weeks of that, three hundred dollars. Bargain. Bargain, mate. Bullshit is love to have a cash in, wouldn't they? <laughs> Whoever oh. knows that, you know, fake psychics, fake mediums, all of a cash in. Anyone they spreading don't. bullshit? They, they, money. they don't. Yeah, they don't fuck around. Charlatans, mate. The whole point about charlatans and panhandlers is, if there was no money in it, they wouldn't fucking do it. Exactly. You know, and just imagine, just imagine the business model of fucking guilting white people into thinking that somehow they are inherently racist just by virtue of being white, even if a racist thought has never entered their mind at any point in their life, that they must separate with $300 to prove that they're in the club. And the worst part is, we all know, and we've all seen evidence of this, if you ever deviate from it, you're going to get fucking cannibalized anyway by the same people that claim to be your fucking allies. Because it's a cult. Even asking a question can be fucking considered grounds to fucking absolutely attack you and tear down your entire life it is a joke when people do it pe I i'd look right honestly obviously no one who watches my videos are ever gonna fucking be involved with that but i would love to talk to somebody that's done that fucking program i mean i really would and just try and Maybe learn we do it, man. really could do Richard's 10 weeks on how to become less racist. 
You might be on three hundred dollars for ten weeks of videos, mate. You know. uh, I think more than likely we get one video out of it, uh, <laughs> and everyone says, "Yeah, this is this is shit, Rich," and then we never make a video like it again. Three hundred dollars well spent. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move on. Virtual reality, Sam. It's the future. It's gonna save us all, right? It, it is. It's gonna make. You know, losers be able to have wonderful, incredible adventures from the comfort of their own bedrooms. It's going to transport people who aren't physically able to do certain things into a realm where they can. It's going to expand the horizons of imagination. There's something for everyone, wherever you are on the spectrum. Slight problem. You might get eye herpes. I didn't even know you could get herpes. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> of the fucking eye. <laughs> Who's allowed that? Why hasn't that been stopped? I thought they were going far enough with dick herpes, frankly. <laughs> eye herpes? Eye herpes, Sam. It's me eyes. <laughs> My eyes are blistered. I only use me dick every now and then. I use me eyes all the time. I only don't use them when I'm sleeping. You know what I mean? That's two-thirds of my day I'm using my eyes. So anyway, this is a report which, uh, even though the headline does say you probably won't get eye herpes from a VR headset, right? You're like, still yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're misinterpreting this, aren't you, Rich? Nah, because what happened was there was a uh, event where they were showing off VR headsets, and that's those, you know, they were at some uh, develop, you know, big dev expo, and people were having a go on it for the first time, like, fucking hell, this is amazing, look, wow, uh, my hand, oh, it's not my hand, bloody hell, it's amazing, they're having a good good old time, and then it was reported that in, in a Skype group at the event, that ocular herpes was literally getting picked up off these VR headsets, and one of the devs even got it off the headset. So there you go. So just as a PSA, uh, be careful. Now, they have said in, in this Verge article that the odds of getting it from a VR headset would be like the odds of transmitting herpes on a toilet seat. I don't know, though, because, you know, when I'm on a toilet seat, yeah, it's not going near my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it means dick herpes, obviously. No, but I mean, well, my dick, my dick's never touching the seat. Yeah, but it's near it, mate. Come on, my dick's dangling in the water, mate. I got worse risks. <laughs> Rob, yeah. Gonna get a urinary tract infection. What's the name of that fish that swims up your jap's eye? Do you know which one I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Or isn't it a parasite? I don't know, but you know, yeah, you it's a... the old thing where you piss in the river or something, and something climbs up your piss. So you, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Books, yeah, swim. No, but it swims up the stream, mate. That's the madness about it. You don't have to have your dick actually in the water. You just piss. Yeah, in yeah. The you just piss for me. Yeah, it climbs your piss. Yeah, yeah, and it it climbs up. What the fuck is that? Swims into your piss. That's unreal, mate. Pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> unreal. Anyway, start pissing so, off the waterfalls. So, make that cunt climb. Obviously, obviously, you're not rubbing it round the seat, are you? <laughs> But have you got a fucking VR headset on? Your eyes are touching the fucking thing. Yeah, you're deep in it. Yeah. So, I don't know about that, mate. I I, I never liked this whole VR thing anyway. I just want to go on record. I'm not too into it. I not, played it a few times. It was, that, right? Mate, it was shit when we tried to do it in the 90s. Right? It was shit back then. I can't remember. There was some awful show. I think Craig Charles might have been on it. Probably. He loves that, doesn't he? When he's not smoking <laughs> shit, crack mate, put me in. by the side of the road, uh, in the back of a car. Uh, but, but yeah, there was some shit fucking, I can't remember what it was called. It was a shit thing. And you had to put the mask on and you had to find people in a VR world. It was like meant to be amazing. It was just shit. And then they made like the lawnmower man and that was shit. And, and now everyone's like, oh, VR's back and it's amazing. And it's shit. And now it gives you fucking herpes. Herpes shit. Yeah, fuck that. You didn't get herpes with the good old 90s VR, did you? Right. 
Anyway, uh, another uh, sort of borderline Darwin Award here. Someone who is so unbelievably stupid. This is from the Palm Beach Post. This is a report about a woman from Sacramento, California. Um, she got arrested on Wednesday after she put handcuffs on herself as a joke. And we've all, ha, 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 And then she didn't have a key. So she called the police, thinking police will not open handcuffs. But she had an outstanding warrant for her arrest. So they just left the handcuffs on and just arrested <laughs> her. Don't you have to waste one of my own? Cheers, love. Yeah. Sound, darling. Straight to jail. So, uh, yep, yeah, shadow. And the thing is, as well, it's not like something stupid, like an outstanding, you know, fucking parking fine or something. She had a felony warrant for burglary. Like, it's not like she forgot about it. Yeah, why, why, why would you even want to go near handcuffs? I'd be thinking, fucking hell, it's a bit near the knuckle. You know, unbelievable. Uh, let's tell Oh God, not this one. Oh, it's just coming at me. I'd forgot all about it. So this is bonkers, right? What the fuck is going on in Austria? What the f- hang on, hang on. If anyone can explain this to me, any viewer who happens to be from Austria, in case there's something I'm missing, and this was reported in a few outlets, but nowhere near as much as what I think it should be. This is a fucking horrifying, awful story. And this, it blows my mind. So maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's some detail the mainstream press are leaving out. I wouldn't put it past them. And maybe someone from Austria with local news or local understanding can can help explain this to me. So please, in the comments or via message, tweet at me. But this is a story about a migrant who had gone to Austria. He had raped a 10-year-old boy in a swimming pool uh, and he's had his conviction overturned because he th- th- that the court could not prove that the child had said no. But here's the thing. In his defense, the 20-year-old from Iraq, he said he was having... A sexual emergency. And what he meant by that was he hadn't had sex in a few months. So it was okay for him to rape this child. I I want you to think about the thought fucking process behind that. I want you to think about what kind of fucking human being even can begin to do the mental gymnastics to to justify it now he was found guilty of sexual assault and rape of a minor and got a very fucking moderate six years in jail if that was the state you know that he's probably facing a fucking death penalty in some states um but the, the the supreme court of austria Ordered a retrial because his defense team, and look, you know, this is a moot point because if you ever ask a lawyer, would you defend a guilty man, they'll laugh in your face. It's such a stupid question because everyone's entitled to a fair trial and fair representation. But you can't be proud of yourself if you get a retrial for someone that did that. Like, I don't know how you go to bed and, and, and sleep at night. After that, that would be enough for me to, you know, that that's where it would be over for me. I'd be like, you know what? He, he wants me to get him a retrial. I, I, yeah, I'm not feeling it. I'd rather not do that for this individual. Because there's no argument about whether he did it or not. He's getting a retrial simply because this 10-year-old boy, there is no proof that he did not consent, which should be a moot point anyway. I'm guessing in Austrian law, uh, Maybe the uh, you know limitations on statutory rape are different or something, but unbelievable. So his defence, sexual emergency, and that's okay. That's acceptable. 
madness. Fucking absolute madness. And then we go from a truly horrible story to something really bizarre. And it just goes to show the disparate kind of laws and fucking what can get interpreted certain ways. So the headline here is in the Northern Echo classic paper. I obviously used to live up in the Northeast. Very familiar with the Northern Echo. Darlington man accused of breaking wind in boy's face stands trial for child cruelty. So this is a roofer who has been accused of mistreating a child because he's done a fart near its face. And it, it, and it was a prank. It's just a prank, bro. He, he broke wind in front of the boy's face. He says it was an accident. I don't know if necessarily that needs to be discussed. And he said that everyone thought it was funny. He's obviously from Teesside. So uh, he's, he's at the Teesside Crown Court. Uh, if the incident had taken place in a rugby club after the victim had 10 pints, this is the prosecutor, uh, after the victim had drunk 10 pints, it may have been dismissed as horseplay. But in Mackenzie's case, it amounted to cruelty. So this is because the, the, the kid is 16. Uh, so it's not even like he went up to a pram and farted on a two-year-old. Or something. <laughs> it's a walking around child. And, you know, it goes into some other stuff. Are they like have a bit of rough housing and, and all of this nonsense? Go in a court for child cruelty. Hang on, uh, it. Yeah. Have you read this? He what? sucked his eye. Yeah, I don't know what that means. What's that about? He sucked his eye while playing for him. What's for the eye? Suck. <laughs> Got it's, him. Yeah, he, he's not going to court for the eye sucking, though. Yeah, it is. He faces three other charges. What, eye sucking's one yeah, of the charges? Yeah, that he punched the boy in the arm and sucked his eye while play fighting. That he held a pillow over the face of another child, which he also put down to play in. Mm. <laughs> he sucked <Right>. his eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I don't know. They've just put sucked in quotes, sucked his eye. No, man. Uh, no, you haven't even read the best sentence because you would have been buckled. Like, we'd have to stop the recording here. Right, it says here on, on two separate occasions, Mackenzie punched the boy on the arm and sucked his eye, which caused a red ring. <laughs> Uh, no, so fucking juvenile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's I mean, he's he's just having a bit of rough hours, and we've all had it. He's you know, like punched on the arm. That's a dead arm. Yeah, game of dead arms, classic. Yeah, farting near your head. That's banter. Vintage banter. Yeah, classic banter. <laughs> and then the yeah, eye sucking's the only thing I can't really. Yeah, never had that before. Like, that's never really had that. weird. Never had that growing up. Let's focus no one, on that I, from now on. I can honestly say no one's ever sucked my eye. So uh, This is an interesting thing, I guess. Just talk about it uh, quickly. Uh, something called skunk lock. Right? And basically what this is, is it's a bike lock, which if you chop into it or try and break it to steal a bike, it just sprays like this fake slurry. Um, and, and it stinks. It's absolutely gross, like rotten eggs, all of that stuff. And uh, it's designed to make you vomit. It's like such an intense stench that uh, it, 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 it makes it, you know, it makes you vomit. Also, as well, it's got like that little bit of kind of pepper spray. It's got like a nice. pepper spray garnish. So not only does it stink and it's horrible, it's got a bit of pepper spray shit going on as well. So you can't even breathe. So like you're choking for air while, yeah. you're, surra yeah, while you're surrounded by the stink of awful shit. So um, it says here, the inventors have not yet tested the device on an actual thief, but they've tested it on a group of volunteers. And uh, they did it at distances of two feet and five feet, 10 foot twenty in 20 foot, right? So at two feet, 99% of people were reduced to vomiting. 
pretty good. Um, yeah, and it, it dissipates at 20 foot, but at 10 foot, it's still bad. It's still what they describe as very unpleasant. So, so bike locks that project liquid shit coming soon to uh, to a street near you. Uh, we'll skip that story, that that next one there. It was pretty funny, but we'll we'll, we'll skip it. We'll go to this in the Independent. Uh, a woman mistook a town meeting for a Trump rally. And so naturally, because obviously if people want to exercise their right to uh, assemble and discuss which presidential candidate they like, which is protected uh, by by the Constitution, uh, you commit vandalism. That's what progressives do. Uh, So uh, a, a woman thought it was a Trump rally, smeared 30 cars, with smooth peanut butter. Notice it's smooth. Thank fuck it wasn't chunky. Right? Uh, Great with, job. with smooth peanut butter in protest. So she got arrested. She fucked up 30 cars. Uh, and of course, it wasn't a Trump rally. It was a bunch of environmentalists. She looks like a, a co- double anyway. But... <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong, Luke. Uh, they, they were getting together to discuss conservation. So she got a family-sized jar of Jif and went out and smeared the cars with peanut butter, shouting and screaming about how much she hates Donald Trump. Mentally ill. <laughs> Perfectly reasonable. Perfectly reasonable. And she, you know, she won't do jail time. Neither did this woman. This is interesting. I, when I studied sociology, Sam, yeah, one of the things we learned about was how uh, when it comes to sentencing, there's this thing called the chivalry factor going on, which is like a a sort of a weird, fucked up, protracted form of sexism. But it's where men uh, in sentencing women who've committed awful crimes, you know, uh, they don't want to believe the woman was capable of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. So what they do is they give lighter sentences. Whereas if a man had done it, it would be considered deplorable and they get harsher sentences. And this is an observable phenomenon. There's data to verify it. It's just another reason why um, I'll never accept this idea of the fucking patriarchy, you know, like in it in its form of intersectional feminism, what they believe. But basically, this is a woman from Alaska. Uh, and she downloaded and traded child porn videos but she hasn't been sentenced she will get zero jail time uh and and it it, it, it's it's crazy this is a former daycare worker uh and and she's got this like effectively a suspended sentence and this is predicated on on she came out in court and said she herself had been abused, which is obviously terrible, you know, it, it, certainly if, if true, and it's not a ruse to, to um, you know, get a light sentence. You know, it, it's that or the old classic, I was researching a book. But the the, the court ruled that uh, she wasn't looking at the images for sexual gratification. It was because she identified with the victims. So she's been given a complete pass. And this is the thing. Understand that she wasn't just viewing it. She traded it with other people. She traded it with other pedophiles. So, reasonable, apparently. Reasonable. Um, right. Reasonable. <laughs> Re- reasonable. Uh, c- a couple of quick hits, and then we're out. So this is just a headline, really. I don't even want to watch the video, which will frustratingly auto plays you open this. But uh, UKIP, that's the UK Independence Party. Uh, he, they obviously need a party leader. And there's a guy called John Rees Evans. Now, jo- John Rees Evans, uh, just look at this headline. UKIP candidate who claimed a gay donkey raped his horse is standing for party leadership. Uh, and he, he just said a bunch of mad stuff in public. Um, someone, uh, it, it, so someone in in the UKIP party said to him. Obviously, this was outside the campaign office in Merthyr Tydfil, good old Wales again. God love South Wales. Um, someone said to him that homosex. Some homosexuals prefer sex with animals. Like, you know, 
uh, maybe some Welsh people prefer sex with animals. <laughs> I don't know, but certainly um, the, the you know this ridiculous antiquated lie. You know, because if you if you look back at the history of sodomy, uh, there was this book called, uh, that I've read called Sodomy Trials. That's a quote. If you look no, back at the history of sodomy, this is true. <laughs> in in law, sodomy, the term wasn't just buggery. Uh, it also applied to having sex with animals. Okay. So if you were guilty of sodomy, it was it was it was, you know, could have been any do, of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be doing the misses in the wrong one, doing a bloke up the wrong one, or just having an animal in any of them, which all of them are the wrong one, <laughs> right? So it, all of it was sodomy. All of it was classed as sodomy. Uh, but anyway, so he responded to try and rebut this thing, saying. Yeah, I've witnessed that. I got a horse, and it was there in the field, and a donkey came up, and a donkey was male, and it tried to rape my horse. And then he said, but don't worry. (laughs) Yeah, don't worry. The stallion, uh, it's got a happy ending. The stallion bit the homosexual donkey in defense, and he intervened to stop it. So So he said this, and uh, gay donkey raped my horse. Uh, (laughs) He, he wants yeah, to be man. the head of a he wants to be the head of a political party, uh, and if it just when it couldn't get any crazier, we'll go over to Infowars. Uh, this is uh, uh, Paul Joseph Watson reporting on this one, and this is a uh, this is uh, again it's legit. It checks out. Uh, Austin, Texas. There's a cafe, a cafe that also doubles up as an animal sanctuary, specifically for cats. It's called the Blue Cat Cafe. Uh, and, and what it does is, you go in there, you have a cup of tea. Uh, proceeds go towards helping reshelter animals, looking after cats, strays, you know, injured cats, uh, things like this. Who could have a problem with that, Sam? Cucks. You're not wrong. Cook, <laughs> cooks up. He's he. That's a hole in one. Cooks all over the place, Sam. Because what happened was, the 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 building where the Blue Cat Cafe was based in, used to be a piñata store. Obviously, you know piñatas, the fake animals. Mm -hmm. You fill it with candy. You beat it with a stick. The candy comes out. Very popular on Cinco de Mayo. You know, part of uh, Mexican heritage, Mexican culture. So, a bunch of social justice warriors took it upon themselves to launch a violent crusade to try and drive out the owner... On the basis that they have taken away land from Mexican people. Uh, they, 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 the graffiti on the wall reads, fuck you gentrified scum. Uh, they also spray painted, get out. Uh, and they would also super glue, the classic, super glue the lock shut. So the owner couldn't get in to feed the cats. On the ba- and, and, and there was a, a Facebook page which is called Defend Our Hoods with a Z. Uh, Defend Our Hoods is the Facebook group which is supposedly behind the campaign. And they say that the store was violently appropriated from the previous owners. Definitely wasn't. What's that even mean? Well, they they just didn't they just didn't pay. The business foreclosed. It, there's no violence necessary. It's economics. Do not pay. Do not keep building that requires you to pay to have it. It's you know, no violence necessary. Uh, so you know, a, a, a person trying to look after some cats and do some good for the local community deserves that. And final story, and then we out. Uh, just in case you thought, po- uh, you know, I don't have a problem with Pokemon Go, Sam. I don't. But there is always some cunt who'll take it too far, right? And I don't just mean you dressing up as SpongeBob with 400 kitchen sponges glued to a cardboard box. This is uh, from uh, the, the str- str- I can't even say it, straightstimes.com uh, in Asia. And this is a story about how a nine-year-old boy was killed by a truck driver playing Pokemon Go in Japan. He's driving a truck. He's trying to catch a Snorlax. 
And I know what he... I'll do. I'm sick of falling asleep behind the wheel. I'll play this Pokemon Go. I'll keep me awake. <laughs> that'll, that'll keep me alert. May I recommend speed in future, mate? <laughs> right. And, and uh, you know, horrible fucking story, uh, of course. Um, and, and it, it, it's mad. Look, just look at this. Just look at this in the fucking report. Um, just look at it. Here you go. Right, this is the latest Pokemon Go related tragedy to plague Japan. On August 23rd, a 72 year old woman died and her friend was severely injured when they were knocked down by a truck driver playing Pokemon Go. Right, uh, farmer uh, Keji Gu was arrested and charged for causing death and injury as a result of being distracted while driving. He was driving at 50 kilometers per hour on a single lane road when he struck both the women. He at first told police he was checking the time on his smartphone before confessing he was playing Pokemon Go. And then just two days later, a Vietnamese woman in her 20s died of her injuries after she'd been hit by a car. The driver in his 20s had said he'd been looking away from the road at the time because he was trying to charge his phone. He said his phone battery was almost dead because he'd been playing too much Pokemon Go. Why have you... Is it, did I miss something? Do you get extra fucking points if you catch one while you fucking <laughs> drive by Pokeballing them? Or something? I know, it doesn't even work as good. You should just go walk. That was what the game was for. Then again, if you go out and walk, you probably just end up getting digs. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, digs, yeah, that's the jumped. point, isn't it? No, yeah, no one wants to walk. Yeah, because no, not cause you get mugged. You get run over by some cunt driving, <laughs> playing Pokemon Go. It's not safe. Anyway, I think that's everything. Do you have anything to add, Sam? Rest PCZ. Stay real of the game. All right, mate. Well, <laughs> you, you forget that we do we we do a proper outro for this show. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. For, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I've just screamed rest in peace, easy E for no reason. <laughs> anyway, that was the news. We wish it wasn't. We'll see you next time. And I hate it here. Rest Bye. Peace.